Hi everyone and welcome to Delphi's how-to video series. I'm Dave Hobbs, senior trainer here at Delphi Product and Service Solutions. In this video, we're going to show you how to replace the entire assembly in a hangar style fuel pump. We always put safety first, so make sure that you are thorough and you're careful. Don't get in a hurry. Don't forget to wear safety glasses and gloves, have a fire extinguisher on hand, and work in a well-ventilated area away from anything that could have a flame or spark. Many modern vehicles have converted to modular fuel pump assemblies, but this style of mid-2000 vehicle has the old-style hangar-style fuel pump assembly. So there are a lot of them out there, millions and millions of them out there in service, and many are needing replacement. So what we're going to do today is we're going to change out the hangar style fuel pump assembly, the entire unit. So let's get started. Now, the electrical connection from the car has been disconnected, of course. The lines, the EVAP hoses, and the, the tank has been lowered, been emptied, first drained, and lowered to this steel table where I can catch any kind of liquids that may still drop, or gas that may still come out of, out of the tank as I do my job. Uh, my transmission jack that I use to lower the gas tank down from the vehicle, I've got, got myself a little drain pan, uh, the old fuel filter is in there and that's been replaced so make sure you do that if there is an inline fuel filter don't do a pump job without it go ahead and get the pump assembly unit and a new filter while you're at it just think ahead now we want to make sure when we take that last electrical connector off that the area around the flange is clean otherwise the debris gets into the tank we have contamination in the tank you may already have that in the tank but you want to make sure you don't put any more in there all right so let's disconnect this electrical connector what is it first off well, that is the fuel vapor pressure sensor for the enhanced evaporative emission system. So we're gonna be careful handling this guy. It's a sensor, just like a map sensor under the hood. So that last electrical connector that remained with the tank uh, now is part of the pigtail, which will be on the new unit. We've compared them before we dropped the tank to make sure everything looked uh, pretty hunky-dory, like we got the right part. And now, we'll make sure we clean around here. Now, I'm not gonna need a shop vac. Um, they're actually vacuum-operated shop vacs that are even safer to the lack of electric motors and arcing of brushes and so forth than the uh, regular uh, wall-powered shop vacs. Now, normally I get a shop vac out there's, and, and move any kind of debris around the top of the gas tank near the flange so that the debris wouldn't get inside the tank when I take the sending unit and pump assembly out. In this case, I don't really need to do that. It's very clean around here. I'm just kind of using my rag, <sighs> blow a little bit, and nothing comes away. It's a pretty clean gas tank, mainly because this is a unit that mounts in from the side, not the top. You can see how the top of this tank, where the EVAP lines are, is filthy. If the Sydney unit mounted from the top, you definitely would want to get a shop vac out. So electrically, we're disconnected. We're clean around here. And I've actually put a little cap that came off the new one on here. Uh, because there will be some gas come out. I'm going to break these loose first off with the ratchet attached, and then I'll just spin this like screws. So we'll go ahead and take the hardware loose. Right. You might also make a note there is an arrow right here, and it'd be a good idea to make a little mark if you don't see one on the tank itself. I'll make another arrow to match the arrow on the sending unit slash fuel pump assembly. So we've got them all loosened up. Let's go ahead and just spin them on out and put them over here on the table. And there's the last one. Kind of pushing up due to the bringing nature of it. Might make a quick note right here before we get into taking the unit the rest of the way out that I did have the unit, the new unit out of the box and I've already read the directions. So don't read the directions last after you have problems, read the directions first. So we've made sure we've done everything according to manufacturer specifications and directions. Everything's unplugged out of the way. We should be able to, with a little finesse, be able to grab this unit and clear the fuel strainer first as we carefully prevent any damage or bending to the, the fuel uh, gauge sending unit arm. So 
So I'm gonna kind of compress that sock a little bit, of that strainer. And as I pull it out very carefully, not bending that arm, too much pressure on it, because I bend that down. If I was to reuse it, we don't really recommend it, but in some cases you do that. You just put the pump in only. Uh, you do want to make sure you do take very good care of your float arm and, and the, uh, the float itself. So there's our unit. There's our pump. We're going to go ahead and put it over here. We can catch any residual drippings from the hanger pump and grab our new unit. and reverse the procedure. So remember where those arrows are lined up and where the fuel uh, line connection was. So we'll go ahead and put the arm in first and kind of compress our, our strainer unit and slide it on in and let it snap on down exactly where it was, put the screws in and torque them to specs. All right, wait a minute. You know, as a technician, you have that little voice in your head sometimes say, wait, did I forget something? You know what? Listen to the voice. You want to take a last moment to look at something sometimes to make sure you didn't forget anything. Remember the directions said that if there's a seal, replace that seal. Most of the vapor pressure sensors are in top of the sending unit assemblies and they're on the top of the tank. This is the side of the tank where the liquid's gonna be. It's really important, not just for a check engine light, but for no fuel leaks to make sure our seal's good. So we didn't point that out. And as a tech, you might not have thought about it, but we're gonna take a quick peek here and make sure that seal is in place. It's glued on with the new pump it might not have been. So you want to make sure it's in place and you make sure it's clean and make sure we're still clean right here and it looks good. So now you don't have to have that little voice nagging you all the way back to the tank up into the car as you uh, now start to put things back together and put the fuel in only to find out that you didn't do something right, you forgot a seal and it's leaking. Better do it now while it's on the bench than have a heartache and have to redo it later. So let's bend these screws in a little bit of a wrist twist with the ratchet just to cinch it up because we're going to compress that rubber a little bit. We don't want to ruin it. So we'll do it in a crisscross pattern. So when in doubt, always just do common sense torquing and crisscross patterns so that you don't create any undue warpage of something flat, making sure our arrows are still lined up and it feels nice and seated because there are little divots in that rubber seal that allow us to put it in position. But sometimes these gas tanks have baffles in them and that's what makes it difficult to get your uh, sending unit arm and float assembly in place along with the, uh, the sock or the, uh, the fuel strainer, like a 10 micron uh, little filter screen. So doing a little bit of a general crisscross here, then hand tight, and then I'll just give a little twist of the wrist, give myself a, a little extra tightness, and we'll be ready to put it back in the vehicle. And it probably would be a good idea to put the little red cap where we find that, that we got off the, we put on the old unit back on here so we can keep dirt out of the pump as we, and the tank, as we raise her back up on our transmission jack, put it in place, hook up all the lines, hoses, tighten the straps up, and add fuel, and get your customer on the road. So we'll go ahead and make our last little connection that you do not want to do while it's on the vehicle. No room to get your hand up there on top of that tank. So we'll slide that uh, connector onto that fuel vapor pressure sensor, and maybe go ahead and even pop our little wiring harness into place, like so on the side with the clip. Well, there we go, a complete hanger fuel pump style assembly. We're ready to go back in a vehicle, add some gas, and try her out. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out more of Delphi's how-to video series so that you can have more tips on saving money and saving time in your shop every day.